Hi guys, we are back with another podcast video, and in this podcast, we're having Mr. Samarth with us. He pursued his masters from Northeastern University, and today he's here with us uh, for sharing his experience uh, related to the masters. Hi, Samarth, and welcome to this podcast video. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hi. Yeah. Okay. So, as usual, we'll start with the intro part. Introduce. You can introduce yourself, Samarth. okay so myself samarth i'm samarth adave i'm basically originally from pune so i completed my bachelor's in computer engineering from pune university in 2018 and i joined north eastern university in fall 19 uh, in the information systems course so this is my last semesters i would say but uh, yes i'll be graduating in this december and yeah okay and tell us about this course that you uh, secured like gre or toefl or uh, ielts yeah okay so i gave my gre twice so after getting score for my second gre i thought i i won't be getting into nu anyway because i had just uh, 296 uh, i had 158 in quant which was good but uh, in verbal i just had uh, 138 so which adds up to 296 total and i had uh, around 3 or 3.5 in writing for gre exam so yeah that that is my gre score and i in toefl i score i scored around 85 so for some courses here in northeastern the minimum requirement for toefl is 95 engineering management is one of them as long as i know but for msis or information systems it was around 79 so i'm i was good with that score so that is why i applied with these scores and uh my aggregate in my bachelor's uh was around uh, somewhere around 67 to 68% over the period of uh, all eight semester which is four years and apart from my scores i had zero backlogs in my entire four years bachelor's degree and uh, i had around two to three uh, research papers published one of them was published in ieee and then there were other journals where i published other two of my papers and i uh, worked as an intern uh, back when i was in fourth year of my bachelor's degree yeah so this was my profile and apart from all of this i had performed in some of the extra curricular as well as curricular activities so this was my overall profile with with which i applied to msis at northeastern okay yeah. so again there is an example guys that with such a low gre score uh, samarth made up to the northeastern university so it is just a myth that you need to score very high to get into these prestigious universities right yeah. <laughs> absolutely <Okay. clears throat> so the next question that uh, comes to my mind is that we all know that there are so many countries that offers such a good masters degree right uh, especially in the, uh, this field of information systems but uh, america is a place which is always considered to be a very costly uh, for the masters degree then also you came to, you moved to america and not any other country can you tell us why uh, yes because some of my relatives as well as my seniors as well as friends who moved abroad to usa i i was closely following them since the day i made my decision to come here in united states so the opportunity even though the costing here is way too high as compared to other countries we can say mm-hmm. but the opportunities are also that many available in this particular country and the practical knowledge that we get so whatever the projects academic projects i have done so far were based on actual 
tools or we can say technologies that are actually being used in current market so i was quite aware of this situation so even though the costing was pretty much high i was like uh, we, once we get the full time job or internship any any person who is studying here in united states can tell you they can just recover their loan or whatever the amount that they have paid in max to max 2 years because we do get paid for our part time our internships as well as full time as well so that was not major concern for me my major concern was to get practical knowledge of things that we i personally felt i won't be able to get at that level in any other country so that was the main basic reason for applying to here in united states and uh, i have some of my friends who tried applying to canada even though it is not that costly over there but they i i feel that uh, they closely look at your academic records so if I, i personally feel that if your academic records are not good but your overall profile is good say you have experience you are uh, technically sound you have skill sets to pursue degree in whatever the field that you are aiming to you can go for united states so i have seen people uh, changing their minds from canada to united states because they had a sort of low cgpa in their bachelors and they couldn't get into canada and if we consider the opportunities united states have way too mm-hmm. more opportunities so yeah mm-hmm. for which universities did you apply okay so i applied to total 10 universities so i had low gre score as well as tofel wasn't that great so i was skeptical about whether i'm going to get into any university or not i had so many doubts so i did not wanted to take any chance so i applied to 10 universities so uh, St- uh, it was stevens university then pace university uh, university of north carolina at charlotte uh in, in illinois institute of technology chicago uh, then northeastern university uh, rutgers university and uh, yeah so these are the six universities i got admit from and then there was rochester uh, university of south florida and university of florida so all the three rejects and there there was one more which was university of uh, uh, california so all the rejects that i got the only reason for me getting reject was uh, my low tofel score because when i checked back onto their systems for that particular course the requirement for tofel was uh, in and around 95 200 so i believe that was the reason for me getting rejects from those university but yeah i got uh, six admits from the first six i universities i told so as you told you got admits from six university so why yeah. not this thing specifically you opted okay so my first mindset was i am no way i'm going to get into northeastern university because it is one of the be- I, one of the best universities at least for education as well as we can say co-op opportunities co-op culture is here at northeastern so i had that mindset so i was pretty sure or i was like focused on this thing that if i'm going to get admit for northeastern i'm going to get into it because first thing it is in boston boston has so many great colleges uh, boston uh, in and around boston there is boston college boston university then uh, there is harvard mit nearby so all the great companies that whatever the name you can take google amazon they have their offices in and around boston like nearby boston so i was aware of that since there are so many colleges there is harvard there is mit there are so many startups that are here in boston as well as cambridge it is pretty nearby uh, boston so these were two reasons and then uh, the co-op program which is the most famous co-op program or many people choose northeastern because of that co-op program so i was gonna get lot many opportunities through that co-op program my northeastern my northeastern portal is there to 
apply for some of the jobs co-ops internships so i was i was quite quite aware of all of these things and that is why i decided to not choose northeastern and also there is one more reason i was looking into somewhat management oriented courses but i was like i'm i want to get knowledge of some technical courses as well and yes uh, northeastern's mis is more focused on to the technical side if we compare with the other colleges so these were commonly all reasons i chose and decided to go to northeastern okay. yeah okay so uh, like coming on to the next question why yeah. did you uh, went for this major of information system and not any other uh, major okay w- w- so was there any reason behind it yeah so i completed my bachelor's in computer engineering but i'm not into i'm not so much interested into the development or that sort of like that much technical field so i was looking for somewhere in the middle like not that too technical and not way too much uh, management yeah. oriented so when i was looking at the courses that were available in all the universities that i applied to i was able to find the courses that i wanted to take in future in the northeastern curriculum so you can go to any you can go to any track may whether it may be a uh, software development web development data analytics data science northeastern mis has all types of courses so it it was something i was looking forward to and yeah i i i just wanted middle of management as well as technical so i chose to apply for mis and then i focused on northeastern mis Okay. So, can you tell us a little about your the course structure of your uh, master's degree? Okay. So, in order to get degree from a master's degree from Northeastern, at least from MIS, you need to complete at least thirty two credits. So, almost all the courses that we have, I feel that around more than ninety percent courses, each course is of four credits. So. take it in a way that you need to take at least eight courses in order to get a degree so in first semester there is one core course which is uh, aed which is purely based on the basics of java so that is the only core course that is there in the information systems course and then there are more than 50 other courses from which you can take those seven courses there are some limitations on some of the courses because uh, some courses have prerequisites so i took say data warehousing and business intelligence course for that course there was prerequisite of data management and database design so i had to take that course first and then i had to uh, take the data warehousing course in second semester so once you get here once you look at curriculum all the rules you get to know all these things and i said 32 credits but eventually every student from northeastern completes 33 credits because in order to go on coop or be eligible for coop you need to take one credit course that is there which helps us to uh, understand how to write resume how to write cover letter how to interact with hiring managers recruiters all those professional uh, communication skills that is of one credit so people uh do take that course mostly do take that course in first semester itself that is how they get knowledge about all those things which they apply in their second semester and after second semester they basically start going on coops so in order to go on coop you need to complete 16 credits which is four subjects which is two semesters so after two semesters you can go on coop and until last semester you basically get three chances to go on coop so one person can do only one coop but if say there is person a who doesn't get coop in first cycle he can apply for second cycle as well if he doesn't get coop in second cycle as well he will have last chance in the third cycle if he doesn't get coop in third cycle as well eventually there won't be any more courses left and that person will graduate in that particular month so i came in fall 19 
so my first cycle was may 20 to august 20 uh, i i did not get co-op in my first cycle so i kept applying for co-ops then my second cycle was september 20 to december 20 i did not get co-op in that cycle as well so in the end i got co-op uh, in the end of december so i work from jan to june which is this month i worked there till 18th of june and basically i got my co-op in third cycle and now i just have one course left basically uh, my degree got extended by around four to six months so this is how the course structure of mis is and people uh, so there are many of my friends as well as me who completely focused on data analytics or data science or data engineering track here at Northeastern. But I guess I'm not pretty sure, but uh, Northeastern have introduced one new course, uh, which includes all the important courses that were there in information systems re related to the data. So I'm not pretty sure, but yes, it is pretty new. I guess it it's just one year old course but uh, many of the data related courses are moved to that course. So if someone wants to focus on data, they can just look at Northeastern's website into that particular course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now tell us something about the internship opportunities. Okay. So internship opportunities are great. So there are many platforms to apply for internships. I, I'll start with LinkedIn. There are way too much opportunities. You just have to be proactive while applying. So there are big companies, say Amazon, Google, who try to hire people as an intern at least six to seven months before that position starts. So if you are looking for if you come here in fall and if you are looking for uh, co-op in next summer, you should start applying for all these internship from November mid to November end. Then only you will be able to get into these big companies. Then apart from this, uh, apart from LinkedIn, there is a glass door, which is another great tool for uh, doing the job applications. Then there is Indeed. And then th there are so many different tools that are there, DICE, Zip recruiter, there are way too many options available to apply for jobs. Apart from this, uh, Northeastern have their own portal where there are some companies who specifically post jobs for students of Northeastern. So if you apply for that company from my Northeastern portal, and if you apply, so the portal's name is NUWorks. So if you apply for that company from NUWorks, and if you apply for that company from LinkedIn, there are higher chances that you will get reply back uh, for your NUWorks application because they prioritize those applications first because they have there are uh, so many companies who recruit a lot from Northeastern University. So opportunities are good. And I would add up to this that if you have an experience, say one or two years, you have great chance that you will get uh, internship in the first cycle itself you won't have to apply a lot or you won't have to wait a lot in order to get internship just be proactive and uh, filter out or filter out your resume uh, related to roles you are uh, aiming for that's it any funding opportunities there uh, no, as long as I know, I haven't seen anyone, at least graduate student getting scholarship or anything from Northeastern. There might be students from undergrad who have got their scholarship or Dean's awards, or there are way too many awards, but I've, I haven't seen any graduate student getting any scholarship. But there are many on-campus job opportunities available, GA, graduate assistantships, uh, then research assistantships, teaching assistantships, and then there are way too many on-campus jobs available who hire a lot. So people usually start earning after second semester. So that is how they manage all those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
so i i would like to uh, add a question over here like yeah. uh, what a student is like what is the responsibility under the graduate assistantship like i don't know about it like what is the role of that student uh, or the responsibility that he or she has to uh, work upon okay so basically these names keeps changing on the basis of their responsibilities it can be anything like uh mentoring the students who are coming uh for the first time here in united states the new students welcoming new students uh giving them tours or apart from this there are some professors who keep teaching assistants as graduate assistants so there are different names for different responsibilities that that really varies like we can't uh figure out any particular thing for any particular name so it keeps changing so there can be anything in under that particular name it's just the name tag that they have it can be okay. research assistantship as well they might get any sort of uh, credit as for it as well so it keeps uh, varying on that particular point okay so apart from the academics in the university what other thing students must get involved in? like some extra curricular things okay so for northeastern they have a uh, indian student organization whose name is uh, nu sanskriti it is one of the biggest student organization here in uh, here in northeastern sorry because there are uh, too many indian students uh, that are uh, doing their graduation here in northeastern so they can get involved in nu sanskriti then there is cricket team as well football teams as well so every game every every game is active here in northeastern so they can join whatever the game they are whatever the game they are interested in then there are musical bands as well musical teams as well where people can join and explore those particular fields then there are uh, some volunteer groups are uh, active as well on campus who helps to perform some volunteer work across the campus on the weekends or after the college ends something like that so there are more than 50 groups available on campus which are focused apart focused on things apart from academics so yeah there are many opportunities for that as well okay <clears throat> so coming on to the next question the next question is about the housing scenario that uh, like all of the universities in northeastern also there must be the on campus and off campus housing right yeah. can you please tell us about that thing and compare the two housing uh, types yes so frankly saying i i won't think there is any graduate student who lives on campus because northeastern's on campus is way too good and way too expensive if we compare on campus and off campus housing here in boston uh i don't know exact amount but from whatever i've heard uh the only the rent varies between $1000 to $2000 or at least 150 uh, 100 uh, sorry $1500 per month just rent not food nothing included in it it's on campus so many graduate students prefer to stay off campus nearby university or far from university so basically on campus is way too expensive so talking about off campus there are many apartments that are available near the northeastern university but since it's closer to northeastern they have little bit of uh, higher amount of rates for those particular apartments so if you are looking for any cheaper apartments then you should look in and around 1.5 to 2 miles far from university where you will get relatively cheaper apartments and uh, the apartments which are closer to university but way too expensive are not that big I have seen one RK apartments uh, having around two thousand rents, where there is one just one 
uh, one big room or two RK, two big rooms, and then one kitchen. It has around 2,000 or 2,500 rent. So basically, people, two people stay in one room. And then if there's another big room, then three people stays in that particular room. But it's not worth it, I feel. So I... I, I would always prefer staying a little bit far from university, but a bit uh, bigger apartment or bigger house. So, yeah, yeah, this is how it is. And if you if you are staying far from university, no problem, because um, the public transport is very good. Uh, here in Boston, you have bus options, you have train options. And from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m., we have free shuttle service available from Northeastern to home, not from home to Northeastern. But if you are in college till say 7 p.m., you can go free to your home using that shuttle service. So there are options available. That's, that's great. Yeah. 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 Okay, so now can you uh, tell us or name some universities that are good for pursuing masters in the information system field. Okay, so when I did my research, I so I didn't look at good universities for MIS, but I looked at universities that I could get into with that particular score. And from whatever the research I did, I was uh, pretty much focused on Rutgers University because. I, I was like, if I'm going to get into Rutgers, I'm, I'll go to Rutgers. And basically, Rutgers, my second priority, Northeastern, my first priority, which I got into. So Rutgers curriculum is really good. And then uh, Rochester's curriculum is also good. And uh, also, I have uh, seen the UMCP's curriculum for information system. I just looked into it, though it's too good university, very higher level university, their curriculum is also good. But apart from that, I didn't do much research about that level of university. So this is, these are all the universities that I would focus on. Okay. Yeah. So now moving on to the next part, so can you tell us about the job market scenario in information systems? Okay. So Information systems, uh, Northeastern, if we talk about Northeastern information systems, it includes all types of courses, which uh, include software development related courses, web design, web development related courses. Then there are some courses, there, there is one, two courses which are focused on product. Then there are too many courses which were focused on data. So what field you are looking into on the basis of that the job market changes but since i'm looking into the data field data analyst or data engineer business analyst so the job market is really good so since the business analyst is a bit uh, oriented towards the management side i feel that they look for little bit experience if we apply for that particular uh, position, but if we are applying for the data analyst positions, there won't be as such experience required for that particular positions. And if we focus on data engineer, they also do little bit of experience in order to get into those positions. I have seen people with zero experience getting into those positions, but um, they might have the skill set to get into those roles as well as they might have uh, performed duties of teaching assistant for courses related to that. There might be th thousand more reasons they got those roles, but yeah, this is how the job market is. And there are too many opportunities available in this particular field. So you can always, if you are interested into it, you can go for it. No problem. Okay. So what to expect from U.S. universities in upcoming years? Okay. So they want students here in the United States. Uh, not, I, I personally don't think there won't be any restrictions put on students who are coming abroad for studying in the United States. They want students from other countries. Because I have seen uh, the people who pursue their bachelors here in the United States or people, uh, 
normal people who are originally from a uh, united states they do get knowledge in bachelors uh that the knowledge that we get in masters they do get that knowledge in bachelors itself so they yeah. try not to focus into the masters degree so for continuing the masters program carrying out the masters degree us university is going to need people from other countries and they they'll always try to look forward to welcome new students and opportunities are good so if you are looking for pursuing your career in united states or at least pursuing your masters go for it okay so coming on to the last question for this podcast do you have any tips for the upcoming students who are aspiring to pursue masters from any american university okay so even i wasn't aware of this but i would say uh, start working on your linkedin profile first then figure out what fields are you interested into i am interested into data field even though i was kind of okay with it or i had little bit of idea but still make sure like whatever the field you are interested in you are doing enough research about it look for universities or courses or the things that you are interested in and look for the universities that are actually offering those things in from their courses so look forward to that prepare your linkedin profiles start uh, writing emails to your friends at least to get an idea about how do you interact with recruiters hiring managers because when i wrote my first email here in united states it was horrible i i couldn't write a good email to anyone but since after taking the courses and after doing lot of communication with lot of people it is improved a lot so start working on it as well and uh, keep building your profile into the field or in by aiming the roles that you are looking into say if you are looking for a data analyst or business intelligence related roles start working on tableau or at least look into the courses that are related to tableau start exploring different data visualization tools such as microsoft power bi then tableau then there are different tools just start watching their youtube videos at least so that that's how you will get an idea about okay this is the thing that we should be focusing on basically start building your profile so that once you land here you will apply all that knowledge through your experiences if you have if you don't have any relevant experience you can always put things that you are already skilled at into your experience in a way that the hiring manager will notice those things so keep that particular thing in mind and start working on your profile from today itself that is how <clears throat> you will be able to get job within first months of you applying for jobs so be proactive from today itself yeah okay so uh, that was all for this podcast guys we thank mr samarth for joining us and sharing his views thoughts and experience all about the masters degree uh,